Hi guys, Alicia here, the newbie crafter. So today I'm going to be showing you how to decorate your tree basically like this. So you're going to want to start out with your tree base and then place the skirt around your tree stand or tree base and then just do that up at the back of the tree skirt. So after that you're going to want to get out the first part of your tree and line that up in the hole of the tree base, making sure that the screws are undone all the way before you do so, and then tighten the screws all the way so that the tree no longer wobbles, so that it is really sturdy and none of your ornaments or tree will fall over. So once that's all sturdy at the bottom, you want to bring down all of the branches and get them all straight. Mine is stored in garbage bags for the nine month, for the 11 months that we don't use it, so I had to work on it a little bit more than we do with the other trees, but that's okay. So I went around the bottom of the tree, well on all the branches of the tree, and I spread out all of the branches on the branch I guess, and you don't want to flatten them like they're a feather or make them a C shape, you want to make them circular so that there's little feathers coming off of all sides of the main branch. It makes the tree look the best and the most realistic. So you're going to want to do this all the way around to all the sides and all the way up the tree to maintain a full looking tree. If you have another method that you like, go ahead and use that method, but this is the method that we find works the best. So as you can see, I sped up the video and I just worked around the entire tree, fluffing everything and making the tree full, trying to avoid any gaps, which I will fix later on, but it does make the process later on a bit easier if you fill in any gaps at this point. Feel free to move the tree away from the wall to, again, f fluff up the back of the tree. And don't forget any of the branches. Next, you can put on your next section of the tree, so that will be my second section, and then you can feather it out. The nice thing about this section of trees is that you can decide how tall you want it to be. Most years I only do the top two sections, and I attach that just to the tree base and it works out just as fine. So you can make it more or less whatever height you want it. So I then got out the top layer of the tree after I'd fluffed this center layer, and I attached the top layer on, and again, I fluff that to make it look like rest of the tree so this part here is a little more challenging that's why I didn't speed it up just so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing I tried taking it off of the tree and fluffing it in my hand um, you can see what I'm doing a little bit better there, but that was much more challenging trying to hold that top part because it's a little heavy and hard on your wrist, so it's easier to do it on top of the tree, but just try and fluff that to look like rest of the tree. Again, if you have an artificial tree, you do not have to worry about this process, but in the long run, it is much more expensive. So the next step is to stand back from your tree and take a look at it and go, is there any gaps in it? Is there any bald spots? Where do I need to fluff it more to blend it together? So I did that at this time and you can see that the tree is looking much more full and looking a whole lot better. And I worked on that top section a bit more. Normally I get my mom to do this for me because I have a very hard time doing it, but it was pretty easy. Now this tree is about a six foot tree, I'm guessing, because I'm about 5'9", so it would be about a six foot tree. So I then plugged in my first strand of lights and I worked that around the tree. I just go in layers side to side, working my way up the tree and then when I need to attach a new strand I just attach the new strand to the end of the old strand. So as you can see there the zigzag motion that I'm doing and plugging in the next strand. Now where this was on the particular tree I had to wrap around most of the back of it but thankfully I had enough lights. So for the last strand I like to step back look where it needs more lights and then attach lights in the necessary area. So then 
my last strand of lights was being really annoying so I'm like so I decided not to use that so I removed that and then I moved around the lights that were already on the tree and filled in those spots where it looked as though it needed more lights so next I got my mom to help me attach the angel onto the tree I just really did not want my angel to fall off so I got her to help me with that and then I plugged that into the end of the strand of lights so that she could light up. So I tried to do the ribbon on that but I had a hard time again so my mom came and helped me. So during that I started attaching the bows that she made for my tree. My tree used to be silver but this year we switched it to gold because it looked a lot better with the ornaments that I had. So we made bows. I'll put the link in the description box to the video on how to make those bows. It's really simple and I really recommend watching that video because it adds a lot to your Christmas tree. So the bows only cost me $10 in total and they will last year after year after year because I can just throw them in the box and then take them out and fluff them up again because it is the wire edged ribbon. So after that I went into my box and I started getting out my precious moments. Now if you're not sure what precious moments are, they are porcelain figurines that are also ornaments for your tree. So every year I leave a little message about that Christmas on it, who it was from, and what year it was so that I could read back on it and remember all of those wonderful memories. So then I open up the box and I put the ornament on the tree and then I continue that process for all of the ornaments. It does take a fair amount of time but it is well worth it when you have quite a few um, ornaments it looks really nice and it's so nice to look back on all of those memories and from all the people that may not still be there with you there's good memories there. So just put those in the spots where the bows aren't so that your tree is evenly spaced out. Now if you are on a budget feel free to just leave the bows there and call it good for that year. Then the next year you can go and get balls for your tree and then after that you can start collecting different ornaments for your tree. It's just really easy. It's really an easy way to get started with your tree and I really recommend that. But for what I do is I just ask for my ornaments for Christmas and I have not bought myself a single one and I have about 14-ish now. So I just hang all of those precious moments on the tree and I really love the way that it looks. Just practice with silver or gold to see what looks better with your ornaments. So here I'm going to show you the ornament and then the name of the ornament and what year it's from on the screen. You can probably get these online, that's what we had to do one year for my mom's snow babies. So you could get these online or buy them in store. You know, I did want to say that this is the first precious moment that I ever received and that was the first one to go on my precious moment Christmas tree and this one right here is my favorite precious moment. And I will try to put links to all of these different ornaments in the description box below. And this one here is from Bronner's Christmas Village and it is the only thing that I have ever seen with my name on it because we had it specially painted. So I just added on some 
non-breakable walls onto the tree and that is the finished